Today, as he said, it's a new series, Living for Legacy. And this morning, we're going to focus on how generosity can be our joy. Because if I'm honest, can I tell you, generosity has not always been my joy. It is my joy to bless me. I like to get things. And so I've had to pray through and say, God, help to make me like you. I want to be generous like you. Jesus, I thank you for every person in this room today. I thank you that you have a message straight from your throne room. God, I pray that our eyes and our ears would be open to see what you want to show us and to hear what you have to say to us. We thank you and we bless you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, generosity begins after we've given what's required. It's kind of like the extra credit, you know? In school, you do the assignment, but then there's extra credit. Generosity is the extra credit. And this principle was modeled to me years and years ago by a woman that you will never meet. Her name was Miss V. She's gone on to be with the Lord. And shortly after my husband Brandon and I got engaged, I started thinking about what I wanted my life to look like, thinking about, okay, we're going to bring different things to the table, can be good, some bad, and I had a lot of debt. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. And it was no one else's fault. It was my fault. It was actually my second time getting into credit card debt. And so I began to pray and ask the Lord, would you somehow make this mountain of debt go away? Because I don't want to bring this into my marriage, one, because I don't want him to have to pay for stuff that I did. But number two, there was so much shame attached to being in debt. There was so much embarrassment attached to it. And I wanted to be delivered from that before I got married. And I didn't want to hand that down to my kids if I had kids one day. And so I was going to church, praying this prayer. And one day, a lady named Miss V that I told you about, she walks up to me and she has a white envelope and it has my name on it and she hands it to me. And so I say, thank you. I have no idea what's in the envelope. I open it and it has $400 in it. Okay, y'all aren't excited, but I was very, very excited. That was a big amount of money to me. And so she just gave it to me and she went on about her business. And so in that moment, I had a decision to make. I could say, hey, I'm about to go shopping, (laughs) get those shoes that I can't afford. Or I could say, I'm going to pay my tithe, that's 10%. I'm going to give an offering, and then I'm actually going to do what I asked the Lord to help me with. I'm going to pay on my credit card bill. Thankfully, I did the right thing. And the next week, I saw Miss V, and she came to me, and she said, hey, I have something for you. She gave me an envelope, had my name on it, opened it. I was so excited, and I was thinking, Lord, please let there be money in it. (laughs) And I opened it, and there was $400 in it. And this happened week after week after week. And I was blown away and I was chipping away at my credit card debt. And one Sunday I thought, God, please don't let her stop giving it to me before I pay off my debt because we got a good thing going. Like she is being obedient to you and I am getting this debt paid off. So Lord, come on, let's, let's keep it going. At that point, I was working at Old Navy And Old Navy was not paying a lot back then. Maybe they are now, but I was barely making ends meet. So her giving to me was such a huge blessing. And she came to me and she said, hey, I'm not going to stop doing this until the Lord tells me to. And maybe for you, you give thousands of dollars away every day. And so that's no big deal to you. But I thought this is thousands of dollars that she's giving to me. I can never repay her. I'm not writing her name in the sky, anything like that. She was just being very, very generous. And so that modeled for me, hey, I can look outside myself and I can be a blessing to someone else because that's what God does. Can anybody relate to that? Has anybody, maybe it wasn't $400, but have you been blessed by someone else before? She was incredible. And so it modeled something so great for me. Well, then I thought, okay, Lord, thank you, Jesus, that my credit cards are getting paid off. 
but who's going to pay for this wedding dress? <laughs> because I can't use the credit card that I just paid off to buy the dress. So, Lord, now we need a wedding dress. <laughs> And so these three ladies at my church came up to me and they said, hey, Octavia, we want to help you buy a wedding dress. I did not tell them that I was praying that prayer. And so I was, of course, very excited. Well, I'm very close to my mom. My mom didn't live in the same city as me. I lived in Louisiana. And they said, hey, we want to make a whole weekend out of it. We want to go to Houston, which, again, to me, that was a big deal. I get to stay in the woodlands. Had never done that before. And they said, we want your mom to come so that she can be a part of the experience as well. Huge for me. And so we made a weekend. It was the first time I ever got to stay in a hotel with my mom. And it was a nice hotel. It's not all about material things, but it was a big deal for me because I came up with nothing. And so we went and we did that. And I just it really began to shift my perspective about how we can be kind to other people and how we can be a blessing to other people. And so this morning, I lost my spot, and that's okay. I, I keep knocking this over. Y'all just give me a second. This morning, I want to begin by introducing us, reminding some of us that we can't outgive God. You cannot out give God. And there's no way that you're giving to other people and God is going to say, oh, well, figure it out. Figure out your own situation. I'm busy over here. That's not the kind of God we serve. We know people like that, but God is not like people. Second Corinthians chapter nine and verse six says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Who wants a generous crop? Anybody? Oh, not everybody. Okay, I want a generous crop. So I'm going to sow generously. Um, I've invited some volunteers. They're going to come up and they're going to help me illustrate what it looks like to be generous and what God does whenever we're generous. Yakita is going to come up. She is here with me all the way from Colorado Springs this morning. Can y'all clap as they come? Daniela is going to come up, and Jenny is going to come up. So this is Yakita here. She is going to represent Jesus in the story. And then we have Daniela, and we have Jenny, and they are going to represent people that God tells me to bless. Okay, y'all got that? Y'all following? Okay, great. So the word of God says that the Lord gives seed to the sower. And so this is bag of seed. And then this is my seed right here that I have. So I'm going to take these cups and I'm going to give Jenny and Daniela a cup and I'm going to take a cup. And so just think about it. If God gives seed to the sower and so the Lord says, hey, Octavia, I have given you some seed, and I want you to be a blessing to Daniela. And I say, yes, Lord, is my joy and my honor. My bills are paid. I'm doing well. Of course, I would love to be a blessing to her. And so I, I fill it up, and I come on over. I'm feeling good, and I say, hey, I just want it to be a blessing to you, okay? It is beautiful when we're a blessing to other people. And I'm not shouting it from the mountaintops. I'm not going to my small group and saying, oh, y'all know she was struggling and I helped her out. Not doing that, okay? And I'm also not keeping tab, expecting for her to give back to me. And so I'm saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, that I'm able to be a blessing to other people. This is so great. And now that I got paid and I paid my tithe, I gave an offering. And now, oh, let's get it really full this time. It's time to um, bless me. Like, it's time for me to go get some new stuff for me. Right, Lord? No? Well, oh, uh, you, want me, you want me to bless Jenny? But, Lord, she has money. But, but like this is, I, but I never made this much money before, Laura. It's okay. So I kind of got an attitude. And, 
And the Lord is talking to me and he's softening my heart because he's saying, hey, Octavia, I look at her heart and I know her needs. And if I tell you to bless her, you don't need to worry about what's going on in her life. You just do what I told you to do. So he's getting my heart right. I come over and I say, hey, I'm blessing you because I know the Lord. Well, actually, I don't know why the Lord told me to bless you, but the Lord told me to. And so I'm giving it to you. And do y'all know that sometimes when we give, like the Lord gives generously. So there's some overflow whenever he gives so that we have some to give to other people. And sometimes we're hesitant to give because I'm thinking, well, Lord, I just got paid and I just paid my bills. So what's going to happen to me if I give to her? And the Lord says, don't you worry about it. I'll take care of it. So I go back over to complain and the Lord has already refilled my bucket so that I continue being a blessing to other people. Does that make sense? He's always refilling our cup. If we are generous and we are a funnel for other people, y'all give them a hand clap. I'm not saying that you should empty out your, pay, your, your uh, checking account and give all your money away. I'm just saying if the Lord prompts you to be a blessing to someone else, trust him. The word of God says, test me and see that I won't pour out a blessing that you can't even receive. And I'm a testimony that God has never left me. He's never forsaken me. Now, sometimes it's in the nick of time. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, oh, Lord, okay. But he is always faithful. Generosity can be our joy when we give intentionally. Give on purpose. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, Each one must do just as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want you to come with an attitude. And, nah. He doesn't want that. He wants you to come excited to give, one, because you're blessing somebody else, but two, because you know that God is going to provide. Decide ahead of time. You know every week whenever you come to church, there's going to be a giving moment. So don't wait till that moment and then you feel under pressure. Because guess what? When I feel under pressure, I don't want to give. I want to run. And Legacy Church is never going to pressure you to give because this is built on the kingdom of God. And what God calls us to build, he is going to provide for. But whenever you give, you're choosing to partner with Jesus. And what he's doing is so much larger than what you could do with the amount of money that you have or the amount of money that you make. Here at Legacy, they don't pressure to give. They invite you to be a part of what they're doing in the community, what they're doing in the nation, what they're doing in the world by partnering with other ministries. Anybody want to be a part of something bigger than what you can build on your own? We believe that a reliance on an inward conviction is most important, especially whenever it comes to giving. You need to be able to hear what the word of the Lord has to say to you. He's not asking you to give what this family can give. He's not asking you to give what they gave. He's going to speak to you with your situation because he knows what you can give and he knows what he wants to do in you and he knows what he wants to do through you. Y'all all right this morning? Very good. Generosity can be our joy when we give from a thankful heart. Psalm 116 and 12 says, what can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? See, the truth is that we can never repay Jesus for all that he has done in our lives, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his kindness. There's no way that we could pay him back. I remember being a kid and hearing people say, he's kept me from danger seen and unseen. I'm like, what does that mean? It means you didn't even know that you were about to get in a car accident, but the Lord had you go left and so that missed you. You didn't know that these things were coming up and the Lord says, I'm gonna shield you, I'm gonna protect you. The Lord 
takes care of us, and he keeps us safe when we didn't even know that we were in danger. That's the kind of God I want to serve. Most importantly, he has redeemed our lives from the pit of hell. And when I think about that, my automatic response is, yes, Lord, you want it, you can have it. It's yours. First Chronicles 29 and 14, everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hands. At Zeal, we say we are owners of nothing and we are stewards of everything. My children, yes, they came from me, but they don't belong to me, okay? They belong to Jesus. He's called me to steward them. Well, I worked and I made this money from this paycheck. Yes, you did, but it's not yours. It's on loan, and the Lord is trusting you to be a good steward over it. See, it's a sign of maturity to recognize that every good thing comes from above, And not just in reading that scripture, but in living your life in such a way that it exemplifies, I am thankful to you, Jesus. You know, it doesn't matter how successful you are, how independent you are. Guess what? You didn't get there by yourself. It's only by the grace of God that your business is doing well, that your health is thriving. It's only by the grace of God because every good and perfect gift comes from him. It's kind of like when one of my daughters has candy and the other one is saying, oh, can I have some? And she responds, it's mine. And then I step in and I say, actually, it's not yours, it's mine. I gave it to you, so you need to share with your sister. Like, who are we to hoard what God has given to us? He only gave it to us Not for us to look good, not for us to floss with what we have, but for us to be a blessing and to point other people to the goodness of God. So this morning, I want to advise you against hoarding the blessings that God has given you. I want to advise you to share them with others because at the end of the day, giving is a matter of the heart. Because if I trust God in my heart and he tells me, Octavia, I want you to give your car away. Who Jesus? Okay, I might have to take a deep breath. But I can say, but I trust you. And I know that you wouldn't tell me to do something foolish. And I know that you wouldn't leave me without. So if that's what you're calling me to do, okay. It might be difficult, but I'm going to do it. Because I've seen your faithfulness. And you're you're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So you're not going to change today. But if I don't trust you in my heart, I'm not even giving you candy. My my pack of gum that I bought, absolutely not. Go buy your own. Right? And it, it feels silly. But when we trust the Lord and we're not driven by material things, then we can release them for the glory of God. Generosity can be our joy when we give willingly and selflessly. So that's like I was saying, we're not giving so we could tell everybody what I did. No, no. You give in secret and you let the Lord do what he wants to do about your giving. 2 Corinthians 8, 12 and 13 says, For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has not according to what they do not have. So the Lord's not asking you to give what he's asking me to give, and he's not asking me to give what he's asking you to give. He's a personal God. He's an intentional God. Are y'all excited about that? He's intentional. See, Paul in Corinthians talks about giving according to your desire. And I opened up saying, I don't always desire to give, but I can pray and say, Lord, would you give me the desire to be a blessing to someone else? I pray that over my kids. God, help them not be bratty, little greedy kids that only want to take for themselves. 
And how many of you know prayer is great and sometimes we need action too. So we were in the car one day and I had purchased some Barbie dolls because I thought, okay, generosity is planned. If I'm gonna give lavishly, I'm thinking through it. So I know Christmas comes every year and every year I say, we, need to, we wanna teach our kids to give more. So I started buying Barbie dolls throughout the year so that when Christmas comes, I already have it, we're already planning to give. But so my kids got in the car and of course they found the dolls and my daughter said, oh, are these for us? And I said, no, they're not. <laughs> and she said, well, who are they for? They're for the kids that we're gonna give them to. Well, who are they? I don't know yet, but when the Lord points them out, we're already gonna have something to give them. So we're modeling that for our kids. You plan for generosity and generosity is not oh, here are my sloppy leftovers. Here's my baby doll that I've already colored on her face and cut her hair and pulled her arm off. No, 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 we don't do that. We're gonna buy them the good toys. What toy would you want someone to buy you? Oh, I want the mermaid with all the colors and this is really nice. Okay, great, we're gonna buy that one and that's the one that we're gonna give away. Because I wanna teach my kids we give generously and we give the best because Jesus gave all of us the best. He didn't give us somebody else's sloppy leftovers. He gave us his absolute best. Generosity can be our joy when we give to him first. Second Corinthians eight and five says, and they did not do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with his will. It's God's will that we give to him first, that we give in the house of God first. And if anybody knows about bills, sister knows about bills. I know what it's like to have your lights cut off. I know what it is like to be facing an eviction notice. I know what it's like to have to go to the payday loan places and they really take so much of your money. I know what it's like to have to go to your boss with your head hanging down in shame and say, hey, can you give me an extension because I need to pay this bill today even though I don't get paid for another week. I know what that's like. And I know what it's like to pay my tithe first and have God's blessing on the 90% that's left over. I also know what it's like not to pay the tithe and for the enemy to eat up the rest of my money. <laughs> I can tell you the other one is better, okay? To have God's blessing on your finances. We're called to give to God first. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I love y'all so much and I pray for y'all and I pray for your pastors, but let me tell you, if the Lord told me to give my one and only begotten son, King, y'all would be in bad shape. <laughs> Did y'all see how cute he was? And he is sweet and he is tender. I would not give him up for you, but the Lord gave his only son for each and every single one of us in this house. His love wasn't merely sentimental. His love moved him to action. His love moved him to give. Does your love move you to give. I don't want to just skip over that because I think sometimes we come to church and we're like, yeah, hallelujah, amen, back on to the way that I was doing things. God wants our love to move us to action, not to just have lip service. 2 Corinthians 9 and 15 Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is talking about the gift of salvation, his death, his resurrection. May it be said of us that we give extravagantly like Jesus. Proverbs 21 and 26 says, some people are always greedy for more, but the godly love to give. See, generosity is our holy resistance to greed. If you're greedy, if you're always, every time you go to the store, it's all about you, give to somebody else because it takes the attention off of us and it helps us to focus on someone else. 
We need to come against greed in our lives. I'm going to wrap this message up very quickly, Pastor Justin. We cannot outgive God. It's impossible. Try it. I dare you to try it. The reflection moment today is that there's an envelope underneath your seat. I want everybody to just hold that in your hand. There's a white envelope. And I don't want any money. Don't worry. What I want you to do is I want you to take this envelope home. Don't leave it because if you leave it, Jesus is going to know. And put it in your car. You can put it in your bedroom. You can put it on your kitchen table. Put it somewhere where you're going to see it. And I want you to pray and ask the Lord this week, whose name do you want me to write on the envelope? And what do you want me to put inside the envelope? So that could be a financial blessing to someone, to the church. It could be, hey, you know what? She's a single mom. He's a single dad. I'm going to offer to babysit their kids this week. It could be, hey, this person is in college and I know they don't have a lot of money. I'm going to take them out to eat this week. It could be, hey, somebody at work, I know that they love coffee and I actually don't even really like them, but I'm going to choose to bless them anyway. It will break that up, the hardness in your heart. You can't pray for somebody and give to them and still hate them. Now you may hate them in the beginning, but eventually it's going to soften your heart. And so this week, I just want you to pray, hey, Lord, and he's super good. You don't have to go down a deep rabbit trail. And also when he gives you a name, don't skip over that one and go to the next one. (laughs) Like I said, no, she doesn't need it. She has money. you, You don't need to figure all that out. You let him work it out and let the Lord speak to you. Hey, who do you want me to give to and how do you want me to give If you enjoyed today's message, please like and share with a friend. Here at Legacy, prayer is our priority. Let us know how we can be praying for you. Email our prayer team at prayer at legacyaz.church. If you'd like to financially partner with Legacy, you can text any dollar amount to 84321. You can also download the church app or visit our website, legacyaz.church, and click on ways to give. You'll see links to support Legacy Church. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment and love, live, and lead like Jesus.